Alright guys, Dominic here for Kit Guru, and today we are checking out the Yama G Master GB3466WQSU. So it is certainly a mouthful of a name, but I really think this is a screen that's going to be very enticing to a lot of gamers out there. And that is for one main reason, the price. That's because for the price of £440 here in the UK, or actually slightly less than that, we are getting a 3440x1440p ultra-wide display using a VA panel, a 1500R curvature, so it is a nicely curved screen, and it's 144Hz refresh rate. All of that for less than £440. That actually makes this screen from Iyama almost £60 cheaper than the AOC CU34G2X that we actually reviewed back in January, and there's definitely quite a lot to talk about in terms of how those screens match up head to head. Just before we fully dive into the review though, it would be awesome if you guys would consider dinging that notification bell, hitting subscribe if you haven't already, just so you get notifications whenever our videos go live and it would really help us out. Cheers. If we kick things off with a quick look at the design though, I have to say Iyama's kind of gone for a very minimalistic, very simple approach with the GB3466WQSU. That's because it's almost entirely black. There's actually no color on this screen anywhere. And the only bits on the monitor that aren't black are actually these two small white Iyama logos. One printed on the front bezel and then one on the rear. From its appearance, you really wouldn't know that this is a gaming screen. And honestly, I think this would fit in just as well in an office as it would do in your living room or gaming room at home. As for the included stand, this mounts using a standard VESA 100 bracket, so you can easily swap out the stand for a third party one should you wish. But it does have height adjustment up to 110mm, and there is also tilt from minus 5 to 20 degrees. There is no swivel here, however, but honestly, I don't think this is a big deal considering it is a curved ultra wide. It's likely only one person is going to be sitting in front of this, and they're not going to want to swivel the screen around. Another thing to note is the small joystick just under the front side of the bezel. This is the only way to control the OSD as there are actually no other buttons and it's also the only way to turn the screen on or off. Lastly, we can also check out the included connectivity. We have two HDMI inputs, two display ports and there is also an audio jack. Rounding things out, we have one USB upstream port and then it's corresponding two USB 5 gigabit per second downstream ports. Overall then, there's really not a whole lot to comment on in terms of the design and general functionality, so let's dive straight in to our testing. Starting first with the out of the box impressions as I always like to do, I have to say things look really good to my eye once I've taken the screen out of the box. Being a VA panel, contrast is always going to be a strong point and that was definitely noticeable. Brightness looked also good out of the box, defaulting to 75%, but still being pleasant enough for use in my office. And lastly, I have to say the colours actually looked really natural, really clean, no kind of bluey or greeny tints, which you do sometimes get. Everything out of the box was looking pretty rosy. Firing up our spider colorometer, it was easy to see why this was, as I have to say, Iyama did an absolutely fantastic job with the out of the box calibration. We actually see an average delta E value of just 0.88, so that suggests near flawless color accuracy, and it's actually right up there with some of the best professional grade screens we have reviewed. And bear in mind, this is less than £500 and it's aimed for gamers, so really, really impressive stuff. We can also see that color gamma is very good, hitting 89% Adobe RGB coverage and then 91% of the DCI P3 color space. The only slight quirk here is that sRGB coverage came in at 99%, not 100%, which is what we typically expect to see. But honestly, for me, I can't say this is a huge problem. So far, so good then. After the first few hours, I was really, really impressed with this screen. Everything was doing what it should be doing. Everything looked good. But there was a catch, and it was pretty significant. If you've been looking at this monitor, maybe you've Googled it just to see if there have been any other reviews. There's a chance you have come across a few comments here and there on Reddit and other forums talking about screen flickering. And unfortunately, I can confirm my sample did exhibit screen flickering when set to 144Hz. 
This happened whether I was using a 2080 Ti or a 5700 XT, whether FreeSync was enabled or disabled. Regardless of what I used, at 144Hz, there was a noticeable flicker. It didn't happen at regular intervals or anything like that. Sometimes it might flicker once a minute, other times it could flicker three or four times within just a few seconds. It really was a pain and in the end, the only thing I could do to get it to stop was reducing the refresh rate down from 144 hertz to 100 hertz, which really isn't a fix considering this is an ultra wide 144 hertz monitor. Taking away that functionality basically kills the whole value proposition of this screen being less than 500 pounds. Thankfully though, Iyama was aware of the issue and they said it just needs a firmware update. I wasn't actually able to do this on my own though, they insisted that the unit was picked up by their service team, flashed and then sent back to me, and that is exactly what happened. I do think it is slightly concerning that somehow this flickering got through the initial QC, but Iyama is at least on the ball, they are aware of the issue and they are fixing it, so it's really hard to say much more than that. I've had the screen back for almost a week now and I can confirm that throughout my testing, with the update applied, I have seen no more of this flicker. So that is definitely a positive. Again though, slightly concerning that it got through in the first place, but it has now been fixed. So with that out of the way, I do now have a screen working flawlessly at 144 hertz. We'll move on to touch on some other aspects, including the brightness and contrast. I have to say brightness actually did slightly surprise me. We saw a peak reading of 436 nits when the monitor was set to 100%. So that is actually a decent result. The monitor does also come with HDR 400 certification. I was very comfortable using it at 75% throughout my testing, but you can crank it slightly higher if you wish. Additionally, we can also see contrast coming in at 2680 to 1 when we have the screen set to 100% brightness. So again, a pretty decent result considering the overall price of this monitor. The only slightly off thing here is that white point which came in slightly warm at 7500K with the screen at 100% brightness. This isn't really a huge deal and a couple of tweaks to the color balance could bring that down closer to the 6500K standard we would rather see. Just before we get on to gaming as well, I do want to just quickly touch on the viewing angles. I wouldn't say this is really a very big negative point at all, but if you're not looking, you know, roughly in front of the screen, you can see the colors quickly get washed out. They get very muted and the brightness definitely looks a bit dull. But considering this is a curved ultra wide display, it's not really the kind of thing, you know, you're going to be viewing from the side. If you're using it, you're almost certainly going to be dead in front of it, in which case it looks fantastic. It's just if you go off to the side, but like I said, I really don't think that is a big point. So with that out of the way, it's time to talk about what it's like gaming on this screen. In my opinion, I really do think a high refresh rate ultra wide display is probably the best gaming experience you can have right now, mainly because of the immersive factor from the ultra wide nature of the display, plus it's curved but it also helps that the ultra wide resolution isn't that high of a pixel count, certainly not nearly as high as 8K, so it is possible to drive relatively high frame rates without spending you know, crazy money on a graphics card like a 2080 Ti or you know, the upcoming 3090. More specific to this display here though, one of the reasons which makes the GB3466 so good at gaming is its overdrive settings, which I have to say, Iyama have tweaked really, really well. This is actually where we're gonna kind of begin the comparisons with the AOC CU34G2X. As in the time I've been using that monitor from AOC, I noticed a couple of things about the overdrive I'm just not that keen on. Firstly, if you set it to its highest value, there is noticeable, noticeable overshoot, which, you know, for me is just simply unusable. However, if you dial it back, which is to the medium overdrive setting, then we still get a little bit of that motion blurring, a little bit of that ghosting, which the overdrive can't eliminate. With the Iyama, however, things just feel a lot snappier. If we set the overdrive to its max value, which is plus two within the OSD, I didn't notice any overshoot, yet things really feel a lot smoother and a lot faster with almost no visible blurring. 
Both the AOC and the Iyama, however, do exhibit some dark level smearing, which is typical of VA panels, especially cheaper ones like these. So neither do handle motion perfectly. However, for general gaming, I do think the Iyama looks and feels the faster of the two. Another big win for the Iyama comes when we get to brightness, as here the AOC does suffer. It records a peak brightness just over 230 nits, when the Iyama is actually coming in at over 430 nits, as we already mentioned. In the time I've been using the AOC, I've had it for about a month, I would say. I can't say it bothered me too much. It's obviously not you know, the brightest out there, but using it in my office, it has been fine. But then there's no denying that the Iyama can get significantly brighter. Like I said, I was happy using it at 75%, but the thing is you just have the ability to push it much higher than the AOC, where it really can't compete. One final point I want to mention is that for the CU34G2X, its included stand does have swivel functionality, which the Iyama lacks. However, honestly, I think that's the only head-to-head -head where the AOC does come out on top. Certainly in terms of all the key areas, in terms of speed, in terms of out-of-the-box color accuracy and the brightness, it is the Iyama which comes out on top ahead of the AOC. And remember, this is the cheaper monitor as well by almost £60. So that really does bring us to our conclusion. And I have to say, Iyama's GB3466 WQSU is an absolutely fantastic monitor for the money. If you are looking for a high refresh rate ultra wide display, this one is really, really worth a look. And compared to the AOC, as we have discussed, I do think it is the one to get due to those improvements in the key areas, while it is also cheaper. The main negative point for me was that flickering issue, but again, Iyama was aware of the issue. They were pretty quick to get it picked up for me, you know, have the firmware updated and sent back and that did completely fix the issue. So I can't really knock them too hard there as they are aware of the issue. They were quick to get it sorted. It is potentially concerning that that snuck through QC in the first place, but really we couldn't have asked much more from them in terms of getting it fixed. So overall, if you are in the market for a new ultra wide, in fact, if you're in the market for any new gaming screen around the 400 pound price point, I really would suggest you look at the GB3466 WQSU. It is a fantastic value option, high refresh rate at that 3440 by 1440p resolution. For me, it's a fantastic gaming experience, and this screen really delivers the goods in all of the key areas. That is going to do it for this review though, guys. If you liked it, toss us a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. Do you potentially have the CU34G2X like I do, and you are now regretting your decision? Let me know your thoughts. It'd be great if you guys would consider checking out our merch as well, linked in the description. And while you're there, why not head over to our Discord channel where we would love to chat with you guys. Finally, you can also check us out on Patreon and consider supporting us over there. And we run some exclusive giveaways and you'll also see some videos early, so it'd mean a lot to us if you can consider backing us. Until then though guys, I'm Dominic for Kit Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.